Hello and today we're going to talk about Plymouth Gin. Now there are four types of gin and I'm not talking about your fruit and various other infused gins. I'm actually talking about styles of gin. So the common gin that most people are familiar with is your dry London gin and we've talked about that before. Now we're talking about the Plymouth gin which is technically a style of gin but there's only one distillery that produces it and it's one of the oldest recorded distilleries in the UK. Now it has obviously been through many trials and tribulations, it's gone through different ownerships, it's gone through um, the Second World War and it's withstood time and many social changes. It's a really, really special gin um, and it's special not just because of its uh, unique characteristics but also because it was named in the Savoy Cocktail Book and not only was it named in the Savoy Cocktail Book but it was actually listed in 23 gin recipes. Um, it's in my opinion this is one of its biggest achievements the Savoy cocktail book in my opinion is one of the most significant cocktail books in the world and it just remains still the book that I turn to whenever I want to look up a cocktail recipe or need some cocktail guidance um, and so to have its actual name mentioned within the pages of the Savoy Cocktail book is a very, very important thing. And it's what allowed the Plymouth Gin to become very popular in the first part of the 20th century, when let's face it, there were plenty of gins flooding the market. Um, now you can see when you look at it that this is a really old gin. The Royal Navy, um, the, the Royal British Navy loved this gin so much that they requested a higher proof gin just for them. Um, and so it's known as naval strength. There you are. Um, so if you're going to take to uh, drinking Plymouth gin, then perhaps you could um, get yourself a swallow tattoo. Um, although the swallow tattoo obviously symbolises a long journey <laughs> and um, is, well, was historically the British sailors used the swallow tattoos to boast their extensive travel ex experience, not their extensive drin gin drinking experience. Um, but yes, flavour wise, um, when we talk about a Plymouth gin, well, I mean, I think it's an absolutely fabulous tasting gin. It's got many, many different flavours. It's drier than a London gin it, and it, it's more citrus. Um, you get a spicier finish from the blend of seven botanicals. It's got juniper in there, coriander seed, which adds a great acidity to it. It's got uh, dried sweet orange peel in there, cardamom, angelica root and orris root and because of all of these roots that are going on um, it's got a bit of an earthier feel, it's got um, a, a, a much earthier oilier finish to it. It's not so juniper lead, it's um, much softer in juniper than your London dry gin um, and that kind of oily texture that it finishes off with is fantastic in things uh, like your martini uh, or any cocktail where you require a bit of a slightly bitterer edge. And, you know, you will find if you are cocktail mixing, um, then Plymouth Gin can work incredibly well. Um, and, you know, it has a really clean, fresh flavour to it. Um, uh, you know it is crisp at the end so I would say it's an absolute must to try but if you are going to try it in a simple cocktail such as a gin and tonic then make sure you get a really plain uh, tonic water and uh, all that remains to say is grab yourself a bottle of Plymouth gin and try it.